Hi folks, Ron from RJM here. Um, we want to start doing some videos uh, showing some uh, tips and tricks on the things you can do with the Mastermind GT. Um, it's a pretty uh, deep device and uh, there are many, many ways to uh, set it up and program it. There's an awful lot it can do. And so um, we'd like to go through and uh, show a few tricks that you know we think would be helpful to you. We'll start with one that, that we've seen a bunch of our customers do already. And it's a, a way to deal with uh, delay pedals that are uh, MIDI controlled, or well, any kind of pedals that are MIDI controlled, really, that have a, a limited number of presets. And so let's say in this case, um, we've got one of these, you know, this could be like an even tied time factor or a Strymon timeline or that, or that sort of thing. And um, let's say there's really only um, three presets that we ever use, um, but we want to have buttons allocated on the Mastermind GT. Um, so that we have instant access to those um, particular presets. And so let's uh, set that up. We'll go into the setup mode here. We'll go to Edit Devices, and we're going to change out this default rack gizmo here, and we're going to change it to Eventide Time Factor. And we'll have it on MIDI Channel 1, and um, the, the other parameters are set as far as how many PCs there are and MIDI banks and all that. Um, so what we can do is um, we're going to just save this right now. And it takes a minute to, uh, to uh, initialize all the, the preset memory for this device. And this is a one-time thing when you add a new device to the system. Okay, so now we've added our time factor, and let's back out of setup, and let's take these um, buttons that were by default set to function 1, 2, 3, and 4 for the Rack Gizmo, and let's um, assign them to the time factor, and we'll make it so that um, it actually calls up four uh, different programs on the time factor. One that's sort of an off or bypass one, and then we have um, three actual delay uh, presets that we want to use. So we go back into setup. Now we're going to edit buttons. We're going to go to the first button we want to edit. And right now um, it's set to uh, toggle a CC uh, continuous controller, um, which was kind of a leftover from when it was controlling a, a rack gizmo. So and this wasn't really um, uh, adequately described in the previous videos, but basically this bottom half of the button edit section is the button actions, and this is kind of the um, sort of the, the low-level way to control what each button does, and it has the most power. You can tell it to send controller messages, PC messages, um, note on and off. You can have it do other things like uh, change the visible page on the GT or even change the preset that you're on, and all these actions can just be stacked on the same button. And so one button isn't limited to just one or two functions, but in fact it can do up to ten actions um, just on a single button. So we're going to take this first action that's already here, um, and we're going to... Okay, so we have CC toggle. Um, we're going to change the type to be a PC, a program change. Um, the device is the time factor, and that's correct. And we're going to take the program number and we're going to set that to program zero. We'll say that program zero on the time factor will have set up to bypass. Um, so we'll hit done, and done. The other important thing here is we need to set the group um, to something other than none. Uh, button groups allow you to take a, a set of buttons and force it so that only one button in that group can be on at a time. Um, and so this is often used for selecting amp channels, and here, of course, we're using it to select uh, programs on a device. Obviously, you can't have more than one program loaded at a time, so we only want one of these buttons to come on at a time. So we'll hit the Group button, and we'll set it to Group 1. So now, every button that's set to Group 1 will be, um, you know, set together so that if you press one button in the group, all the other ones in the group will also turn off. Okay, so here's our first button, and we'll, uh, we'll even change this name here real quick, and we'll just call it Bypass. So 
so we uh, don't have to see the function one label anymore. And so now we have this button that says bypass. You know what, let's go in and change the color too so it's easier to, to see what we're doing. We'll have the uh, off color be purple and the on color to be white. Okay, next button, we can go in and uh, this one, again we set to PC and we'll say program number one is our first delay patch and we'll change our colors again and we'll change the, no the, the name to, we'll just say, oops, We'll just, we'll just call it uh, delay one for simplicity. Okay, so now we've got bypass and delay one. Let's go to the next one, change the action to PC. Number two, change our colors and change the name. We'll go delay. Back out, and now we've got bypass, delay one, delay two, and go to the fourth function. Same, change the color, change it to a PC, and this one is program three. And I realized that we didn't set the groups on these buttons, so we'll set this to group one. We'll finish up here on this one, change the name. To delay three and let's go back to those other two buttons and set the group to group one. Okay, now if we exit out of setup we can see that in this group only one of these buttons is allowed to be on at a time and this will select um, one of the first four presets on your delay pedal and so so this part you're already done and um, the cool thing is you can tie this to the actual presets on the mastermind um, you can go for example and say well for preset one we just need bypass and we can store that using the page IA store button but preset two we want delay three on and we can store that and preset three we'll put on delay one um, the default for each preset um, would be the, the lowest number in the group, so in this case it's the bypass. And so you can see as we change uh, presets, the delay also changes, and, um, but we always have um, direct access to that. And so that's, uh, that pretty much takes care of it, and so that way you've, you, you know, you've always got access to your delay, um, and you always know what preset you're on, and so you're, you're not limited to having one set of preset buttons effectively. And you could even have multiple pedals using different groups. You could have, you know, group two here controlling a completely different pedal, or anywhere else, even on a different page. So now we can go one step further, and let's say your, your time factor pedal is in a mini effect gizmo loop. And so you want to use the mini effect gizmo to get a... a a true bypass on that pedal um, and, and um, be able to switch it out. And so what we can do is um, even get rid of this actual bypass button and just use these three buttons and we'll, we'll show you how that works. So let's add another device. We're going to add our mini effect gizmo. We'll put that on MIDI channel 2. Okay, that one's all set. We can save that and let it initialize the device. Alright, now we hit done. And now we can go back to our buttons. And what we're going to do is um, we're going to disable this bypass button. And um, I'll show you why that is in a, in a bit here. But basically, we're going to take it out of the group. We're going to set the group back to none so it doesn't affect the other three delay buttons and we're going to um, remove this action here. So we're just going to delete the action that tells it to send a program change to the time factor. And we'll just, um, for now, we'll just clear out the name and we'll just put in, you know, we'll just put in 
We'll just put in none for right now. Obviously, you'll want it to do something else, but uh, we just want it out of the way. And we'll change the colors back to default too, so it's not um, so it's not uh, confusing. Okay. So now we've we've done that. Now we've got our three buttons here, and what we want to do to uh, what we want to do here to control the mini effect gizmo is we're going to have a CC toggle, and the device that we want to control is the mini effect gizmo now, and we'll select the CC, and we'll say that the time factor is in loop five of the mini effect gizmo. So we're assigning the CC to button delay one and we're going to control loop 5. So we save that. So now we have two actions here. So when you press the button, it's going to send a program change to the time factor and it's going to turn on loop 5 on the mini effect gizmo. We can go to the next button. Do the same thing. We add an action. Select the mini effect gizmo device and then select loop 5. And then we go to the third button, and we add the action, same thing, mini effect gizmo, loop 5. Okay, so now any one of these buttons we press is now going to turn on loop 5 on the mini effect gizmo, which will unbypass the, the time factor. So if we go out and look at that, we'll see it pretty much does the same thing as it does before. Now you say, well, what about um, how do we turn it off now? And that's um, one more setting we have to do. We go back in here and we go to edit groups. And we were, these are all set to group one. So we select group one. And there's this one here that says allow off. And uh, what that does is it allows you to uh, turn off all the buttons in the group. So you can either have one button on in the group or you can have zero buttons on in the group. And that's what we need to be able to turn off this, uh, this particular effect. So we're going to allow off is on and now when we exit back out um, you see that they're all off and we can turn on delay 1, delay 2, or delay 3 but if we hit it a second time it turns it off and so this will send an off message to the uh, the mini effect gizmo to bypass the loop and so when you press a button on it will send the program change to the time factor it will turn on the loop when you press a button off, it will turn off the, uh, the loop on the mini effect gizmo. And same thing here, you can select which one of these you want to have on, or none, for each preset, and uh, store it like before. And uh, the Mastermind GT will, will uh, handle it all for you and, and uh, send the correct commands to the time factor and the mini effect gizmo. So that's it for today. Um, we're going to try to do more of these tips and tricks uh, as, as time goes on. If you have any suggestions for us or uh, particular topics you'd like us to address, um, please let us know. Um, you can email us at uh, support at rjmmusic.com. Um, we also have a, uh, an active forum on our website um, where we post a lot of uh, good tips and, uh, and other information about the Mastermind GT. And uh, you can find that at our website at www.rjmmusic.com slash forum. Thanks so much.